Hey everybody, Neil Anderson from Flatbox and Digital Revolver here at NetApp Insight in Vegas again. I'm here with Justin Parisi, who if you're working with NetApp, I'm gonna be shocked if you don't already know who Justin is. Justin has his blog at Why Is the Internet Broken? He also does the Tech on Tap podcast. And if you ever need to know anything about NetApp, Justin is usually your first stop. Uh, also, you can subscribe to updates on Why Is the Internet Broken? Uh, that's something I do, I always recommend everybody else does as well so that for any new developments in the NetApp world, you're going to heed it there first. So thanks very much, Justin, for taking the time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having today. me. Yep. How have you been going at Insight? Good. It's a long event. You get tired of you know, walking around and everything, but it's you know, a lot of good productive conversations, a lot of good sessions, a lot of good feedback we're getting about what we're doing here. Yeah. You've been super busy. Like, it's been hard to find time to sit down together because yeah. you're, yeah, you're in demand. Well, it's funny because, like, you know, Three weeks before the event starts, my calendar is pretty open. I, I know where my sessions are, but about a week before the event, every, you know, they start piling in, right? Everybody trying to fill that time. So, you know, VIP sessions with customers, or just doing the podcast stuff with everybody around here, trying to find people randomly. Uh, also, you know, the sessions and you know, in general, just trying to find out what's going on and what people think about it. Uh, one of the sessions you are doing this week is watch new on on tap in the upcoming release. Yes. That's something that I'll be doing a post on. I'm, I said I was going to post every day, and yeah. I haven't even done a post yet because it's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's uh, definitely a it's a hard thing to do to keep up with the daily events. So we used to do a daily podcast, and I, I just found that was way too much work. So now we do a weekly recap, and yeah, I think weekly is good. That way you can collect your information and then put it all together and it also is great because you're not repeating yourself every day yeah. I found that with podcasts you know, you're saying the same thing over and over again like, okay is this really adding value so yeah uh, as a listener I prefer a weekly podcast as well like there's a lot of podcasts that I listen to and there's been a few that I've started with that are daily and then like you just you don't because you know nobody listens to just one podcast right yeah. and it's impossible to keep up with a daily, I find it impossible as a listener to keep up with a daily podcast and then you feel bad, you're like, oh, what I've missed and you end up just going back to your weekly ones anyway. Yeah. That's what always happens with me. It's information overload. You also don't want to have your podcast be too long. Yeah. When we first started, we were like, sometimes we'd go an hour and a half. Yeah. And then I got the feedback, like, hey, yeah, maybe that's too long. Like, yeah, you might be right. So, yeah. 30 to 45 minutes is what we aim for. That's like a nice digestible, you know, way of you know, consuming a podcast. Uh, and another way to kind of do your podcast, people have told me, is to speed them up. It's to a one and a half speed or two times the speed, and that way you're getting through them fast. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a it's fun to do. I you know get to play on the microphones and geek out on the audio and that sort of thing. Yeah. I think like mo most people listen to them when they're on their commute as well, anyway. Yeah. So yeah half an hour i guess is probably about right yeah some people listen to it when they're working out you know lots of different ways you can take it in uh you, know, you subscribe it'll automatically download for you yeah yeah okay so i guess we should talk about storage right i guess so we're here, we're here for, right? <laughs> yeah okay so i'm gonna just keep this interview short because i know you are busy and it's nearly lunchtime as well i'm getting hungry I'm sure oh, you yeah. Are too, yeah so what what are the like the main trends that you're seeing in the storage industry right now? So one of the main trends that's been happening for a few years now is people are looking less at the things to buy on-prem and owning the hardware and looking more towards other options that may be more cost effective, whether it's going to the cloud or buying something like HCI or some simplistic way to, to consume storage that doesn't require a PhD to run the environment, right? Um, a lot of storage admins don't have time to learn new features and, and you know new options and the command line. They just want something they can do use to quickly deploy things. And more and more, we're seeing that the application teams are driving how those storage environments are being consumed. So you know, we as NetApp has evolved, we've tried to honor those types of trends in the market. So we're doing things like NetApp HCI. We're doing things like cloud volumes on tap and just different ways for people to get on tap, on tap select to do it, you know, remote deployments or you know, even in, you know, autonomous cars and that sort of thing. So a lot of different ways to, to use NetApp and, and implement our data fabric to move that data anywhere they need to have it. Are you, are you seeing more deployments of select now? It's, it, maybe it's a coincidence 
But this week, that's come up in so many conversations with yeah. me. It seems like every time I have a conversation with somebody, it's been something that, that is a possible solution for them. And previously, yeah, I didn't hear people talk about it that much, but I have been a lot now. So are you seeing that being used more? Yeah, so originally it was on tap edge, and it was like a single node. So it wasn't real useful for a lot of enterprises, right? You know, you could basically do DR or something like that, or just like the robo use case where you have a remote office. But now that ONTAP Select has HA capability, you can stand up multiple nodes in a cluster, you can have multiple terabytes of data associated with it. They're including features like being able to use Flash media on it, uh, you can use Fabric Pool on it now, uh, you can use Flux Groups on it now, so it's becoming a more fully fledged ONTAP release, and it's becoming more of a reality for customers to use it. It's a good entry level to get in if you don't want to buy an entire FAS. You can put it on any type of hardware you want for the most part, as long as it's qualified for the CPUs and different uh, features that you need. You can even put it on competitor systems. Like you can stand up a ONTAP select instance so that you can run enterprise class NAS on systems that might not support NAS or might not have NAS that's adequate. The, the other thing I've seen a lot this week, which wasn't a surprise at all, is cloud, as you mentioned yeah. earlier. And yeah, we've got all the cloud vendors are, yep. are here represented this week as well. Um, I guess you've, you've been doing a lot of work with that lately as well. Yeah, so uh, NetApp has done a lot of work with cloud uh, and partnering with cloud vendors. So one of the mistakes that some vendors make is thinking they can build their own cloud from scratch and then have people just start consuming it, right? But you're going up against the Amazons and the Googles and the IBMs. So, you know, how are you going to compete against that? And is it going to be a long enough runway for you to be able to do it and be profitable? So rather than trying to compete against these cloud vendors, we've decided to partner with them because we have an interesting feature set and a story that they would want to use. And it's, they have a similar problem, right? They have this cloud architecture, but they don't have maybe the underlying underpinnings that they need to run it effectively. So why not? Right? You know, why not partner with NetApp? Make sure that you're doing the cloud the right way. So you know, we have multi-cloud solutions with Google, with uh, you know, AWS and Azure, uh, as well as you know, IBM, object storage. A lot of different ways to consume the cloud. Okay, all right, Justin, well, that is just coming up to 10 minutes. Actually, for the interview, you said we'd keep it short. All right. We'll get some lunch. Yes. So thanks very much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. It. Yeah, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm NFS Dudabides. Even though I don't really do NFS as much anymore, that was my core competency for a while there. Yeah. But yeah, so and that's where you can get updates about the podcast and the logs as well. I, I will put links below the video for everywhere that you can find Justin as well. And again, remember, sign up for those updates from the blog. I, I find it's the best way to keep up to date with everything now. It, I, I'm just impressed you have not asked about the Mohawk yet. <laughs> is, I just, is it, it's I'm, just been blending in? Yeah, I'm so used to see, I see you with it on more often than yeah. if, if you weren't wearing it, I would have asked about it. I would have found it unusual. Yeah, so it's just basically we're cross-branding with the podcast. We have a little gopher mascot that I've created with the blue mohawk so I'm just trying to spread the word about the podcast solving the problem that doesn't exist so all right all right, all right. thanks again Justin thank you and